Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm just getting over an illness. It was either brought on by natural circumstances or the film I saw was so bad it made me physically sick. Either one wouldn't surprise me. So, the doctor says I should be fine, though, as long as I get plenty of rest and relaxation. Ow! Ho oh, ho! Don't you know? The cure for anything, anywhere is laughter! Ho oh, ho! Who are you? I'm Dr. Bitch Spasms, and I'm here to make you laugh! Ho oh, ho! But I don't want to laugh, I want to get better! Ho oh, ho! Laughter's the best medicine! No, medicine's the best medicine! Ho oh, ho! What? You don't trust a doctor who looks like this? No, I don't. Look, a red nose! It's funny! No, it isn't. It's funny. 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 No, it isn't. Ow! <laughs> yeah, it's Patch Adams, everybody. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Nostalgia Critic, you're against new forms of medicine and new techniques. No, I'm not. I'm against a bad Robin Williams movie horribly relaying that new form of medicine and new techniques. I personally don't know if the techniques of the real Hunter Adams work. Maybe they do. Maybe he's a genius. From what I've looked up, he seems pretty legit. But the way they're trying to tell his story is such a cliched, emotionally forced dick fest. It makes me want to kick him in his comedic dangly red balls. So let's see how much based on a real story can get away with. This is Patch Adams. So how is the raunchy Williams going to make his entrance in this film? Oh wait, is this the actually funny Robin Williams or the shoving inspiration down your throat until you puke Robin Williams? Cue the piano. We see Patch checking himself into a mental institution because he's suicidal. Now, is it me, or would they put the suicidal person in a less threatening, holy shit, I want to shoot myself location than this? Help! Help! We need help in here! Somebody! Yeah, I'd be afraid of a Fisher King reunion too. I don't know, even for 1969, wouldn't they know not to put a person who's, for the most part, calm and of sound mind in a ward filled with screaming, unstable people? Well, maybe they're not unstable. Maybe they're just misunderstood. Oh, Pat, show us the way. I think he has a question. Do you find that funny, Hunter, making fun of a man's infirmity? Maybe he does have a question. He's alive. He's catatonic. He still has a brain. Maybe he wants to participate, too. Maybe Beanie knows a lot more than we give him credit for. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we should treat him like a person instead of just some useless punchline. Beanie, how much taller is Will Chamberlain than you? How do you say hello to Hitler? <laughs> Who would win a staring contest? Beanie! Who fought it? Beanie! Who likes to masturbate? Yeah! Our healer, everybody! When he's not done making fun of what's wrong with you, he goes down to the orphanage to mock the kids with no parents. Oh, wait, 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 that's right. Adams is the hero because the big, bad establishment doesn't want people laughing. Hold on, hold on, this is most unorthodox. How many fingers do you see? Four. Four? Mm, another idiot. He also befriends a brilliant mind that went crazy a few years ago. But, of course, Patch connects with him. How many do you see? There are four fingers, aren't there? No, no, no. Look at me. You're focusing on the problem. If you focus on the problem, you can't see the solution. Never focus on the problem. Look at me. Now that's a good point. In fact, most of the time, I don't even want to know what the problem is. I just want to focus on the solution. Nostalgia Critic, there's a- Ba, 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 ba. Don't tell me the problem. I only want to focus on the solution. I see a banana. Use a banana. A banana's going to put out a fire? Yes, it is. But I don't think that... Are you part of the establishment? No. Then use the banana! There, now, you see, you didn't believe the banana would work, and that's why you're on fire. Look beyond the fingers. How many do you see? Eight. Eight's a good answer. Yeah. See what no one else sees. See what everyone else chooses not to see. Out of fear, conformity, and laziness. Wow, how inspiring. That's the most original message I've ever heard in a Robin Williams movie since Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poet Society, Fisher King, Jack, Goodwill Hunting, Being Human, Jacob the Liar, Flubber, Bicentennial Man, and Man of the Year. But I'm sure this Robin Williams movie has a totally different spin on it. So he sees that by acting goofy with the patients, he can bring himself to their level and help cure their fears. So he decides he wants to leave and help people. 
I'm leaving. I want to learn about people. I want to help them with their troubles. That's what I do. But you suck at it. Most unorthodox. I want to listen. I want to really listen to people. Wonderful. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful psychiatrist or a medical doctor. I guess they're practically the same thing. So he finds the best spot to inspiringly rebel as he meets up with his new roommate. I don't mean to be rude, but aren't you a little old to be starting medical school? Patch Adams. Mitch Roman, Georgetown University. I was awarded the William F. Thompson Scientific Achievement Award. I once drew a picture of a rabbit that got me two gold stars. Hmm. I hope you in no way emotionally change me by the end of this film. <laughs> But there's even more of the evil establishment to battle. Like the evil doctor who tries to teach everybody to never get emotionally involved with their patients. He trusts you the way a child trusts. He trusts you to do no harm. I'm sure she's not the love interest. Human beings are not worthy of trust. It is our mission here to rigorously and ruthlessly train the humanity out of you and make you into something better. We're going to make doctors out of you. Mercy is for the weak. Here, on the street, in competition. A man confronts you, he's the enemy. An enemy deserves no mercy. <laughs> so Patch tries to make a move on the obvious love interest, but sadly, like most of the people in this movie, her dialogue is nothing but a walking character introduction for the trailer. Lesbian, yeah. ballbuster, airhead, leech, whichever one of these disgusts you the most, take your pick. I'll... Please, pass the word, I'm not here to date, I am not here to flirt, I'm here to study. Okay, remember in my haunting review how I said the 90s had a certain way of writing homosexuals? Well, they had a certain way of writing women, too. Women in the media for so long were always the emotional support, the damsels, the smiling pretty faces. So in the 90s, there was a desperate need to change that. Oh, not by making them a pretty Pff, fuck, we wouldn't do that. But we suddenly made them cold, bitter, confrontational, and overly strong to go out of their way to show that they're not those old emotional stereotypes and instead make way for new emotional stereotypes. For you see, in every 90s film, the woman behind this strong, independent wall that won't let anybody in is a sad little bunny rabbit that will eventually let down her defenses and reveal a tragic backstory. So you see, she wasn't a strong, confident worker just because she was a strong, confident worker. Deep down, she just wants to be hell like any other fragile woman. Oh, I don't want to think. I just want to be loved. So Patch wants to lower her defenses and get through to her insecurity, even though he's clearly the king of masking insecurity himself. But we don't want to lower his defenses because he makes us laugh. And that excuses everything in this movie. And I'm not kidding. Look at his rationale of acting like a jackass in medical school. The goal will be to break through program response by changing normal parameters and getting a new emotional response from the person. Hello. Hi. I don't get it. Hi is a programmed response. I reached her. You scared her. No. Wait. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, nice. A smile. Oh yeah, that's a rational response, and not some contrived screenwriting device. <laughs> Ow! Ho oh, ho, you see? I connected with you. No you did, you hit me in the face! Wait for it. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> you know, I'm really regretting writing this character. So... For whatever reason, we get a weird segue where Patch and his friends convince a guy that they're part of a meat packaging convention. Yeah, you heard right, a meat packaging convention. Here in New Zealand, they found a whole new use for sheep. What's that? Wool! <laughs> oh yeah, I can clearly see that this movie is going to represent people in an accurate and realistic manner. No stereotypes or manipulative portrayals here. This movie's like watching real life. <laughs> Proud of your meat. Yeah. Whip it, zip it, and send it out. Yeah. All right, so we spent three damn minutes in this place just to realize what? That if he wears a doctor's coat, he can fool people into thinking he's a three-year student. Okay, movie. Did you just make a bet that you could somehow work a meat packaging convention scene in there somehow? Here we have a juvenile onset diabetic with poor circulation and diabetic neuropathy. 
As you can see, these are diabetic ulcers with lymphedema and evidence of gangrene. Consider antibiotics, possibly amputation. What's her name? I was just wondering the patient's name. Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Hi. All right, are you telling me that years and years of medical research and we never put together until the early 70s that there's a difference between not being emotionally evolved and not being a dick? Who would talk that way in front of a patient, even back then? It's called Bedside Manor. That existed before Patch Adams. I mean, this kind of misrepresentation is just giving him all the more reason to do stupid things like... <laughs> oh, I was in a mental ward. Can you tell? Awesome, wonderful. I mean it. That's really, really great work. Be a clown! I mean, you're clearly not doing anything here representing a doctor. Go to hospitals and cheer people up. That's fine. I have no problem. But I'm sorry, if choosing my doctors comes between this... Stabilize the blood sugar. Consider antibiotics. Possibly amputation. And this... I'm choosing the amputate guy. I don't trust him with a saw. But the big, bad establishment won't let him have any fun. Let's take him to a darkly lit room where shadows are casted on his face. Truth of it is, Hunter, passion doesn't make doctors. I make doctors. But don't you think it would be Our bad? way of doing things is a product of centuries of experience. It's my hospital. First, we will heal patients, and then the world. <laughs> But the doctor's cold-heartedness does not sit well with the charming rebel. 1432, deviation of the tongue. I think we'd learn more if we were working closely with patients. I thought that's why we're here studying, to learn enough to help the patients. Yes, that is right. Adeline, don't waste your breath. Don't you... Th if he does that again, you can shoot him. Don't you think I see through you? Hmm? You act like you're above the system when you're really just a nonconformist. You have to get under the fingernails of any authority figure that crosses your path as a way of dealing with some insecurity. That is correct! That is correct! Please hand over the rest of the movie to her. Clearly, she should be the focus. Listen, can we get back to the tongue, please? What if a doctor becomes emotionally involved with a patient? What is wrong with that? Does a doctor explode? No. You know what I'm going to you know, I, I'm going to take that scene... I'm going to put it away, and I'm going to save it for later. Because, trust me, that scene is really going to stab this movie in the ass later. No, no, it's okay. You'll get your chance. No, 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 don't touch anything out there. No, 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 don't touch that. <clears throat> bad scene! That's a bad, bad scene! So acting kooky to entertain patients is one thing, but fuck it. Patch wants to act like an ass full time! So he goes around to all the students who are not sick and annoys the living shit out of them. Even when they're in the middle of taking a test. Donner, party of 50? Donner! Donner, party over here! You know, if I stab you, will you promise me that you will not only die, but it will hurt? He also sneaks into patients' rooms and surprises them with balloon animals. I. Sure hope none of them are susceptible to heart attacks. Oh, and thank God sleep isn't important to any of the other patients in this ward. It's not like they put them in those beds overnight to get rest. No, no, no. It's to watch people have mental breakdowns with balloon animal safaris. This is my way of telling you, you have cancer! What about you, dear? What's your fantasy? <laughs>